Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. In yesterday's Vortex, we spoke about being able to tell the difference between people who are enemies of Christ inside the church versus those are, who are simply go along with the current modernist flow in a naive or unsuspecting manner. Perhaps the most telling way you can discern the difference is their deference and reverence for our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. After all, the Eucharist is our blessed Lord, and it is difficult for his enemies to show him any degree of real reverence. Any leader in the church, especially a bishop, but also a priest, nun, RCIA director, religious ed director, school principal, etc., who demonstrates a lack of reverence for the Eucharistic Lord has got to be viewed suspiciously, not because we need to sit around and condemn them, but because a lack of reverence for the Blessed Sacrament is a sure sign that other soul-damaging activities may be happening. Anyone who claims to be Catholic, yet is dismissive of our Lord in the tabernacle, can't be taken as a serious Catholic. And that means anyone. Bishops, priests, nuns, lay leaders, anyone. A recent example came up in Albany, New York a few weeks ago, when the bishop of that diocese, Howard Hubbard, allowed distribution of Holy Communion to the new governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo is an out-and-out -out supporter of killing children through abortion, as well as killing the family by pretending that so-called homosexual marriage is perfectly moral. He is also a divorced Catholic cohabiting with his girlfriend. All of this is widely known by everyone, including Bishop Hubbard. The fact that it is widely known makes the matter notorious and open to giving scandal. Yet at this particular mass in question, Cuomo, and according to some reports, his concubine, strode up to the altar and received the body and blood of our blessed Lord in direct contradiction of the sacred scriptures, 2,000 years of sacred tradition, not to mention canon law, all with the approval of the bishop. When Catholics over the, all over the country were scandalized by this, the bishop's response was essentially, mind your own business. Now contrast this to the case of another bishop, this one, Bishop Samuel Aquila of Fargo, North Dakota, who just last week said the following in a speech, quote, One must honestly ask, how many times and years may a Catholic politician vote for the so-called right to abortion, murder in the words of John Paul II in Evangelium Vitae, paragraph 58, and still be able to receive Holy Communion? The continual reception of Holy Communion by those who so visibly contradict and promote a grave evil, even more than simply dissent, only creates grave scandal, undermines the teaching and governing authority of the Church, and can be interpreted by the faithful as indifference to the teachings of Christ and the Church on the part of those who have responsibility to govern." End quote. The positions of these two bishops is irreconcilable, and that's the case because they have wildly different beliefs about the nature of the Church, the sacraments, the Eucharist in particular. This is not a difference in matter of degree, but in a matter of kind. They simply do not believe the same thing. One is right, the other is wrong. When a bishop like Howard Hubbard is promoting an agenda contrary to the teachings and beliefs and magisterium of the Church, he places first his own soul in eternal jeopardy, as well as the souls of his priests and the flock entrusted to him. The way in which the faithful distinguish between leaders in the church who advance their version of the brave new church and those who are simply naive is to pay close attention to the specifics of the agenda they advance. It's one thing to be something of a coward or have a personality that doesn't like to rock the boat. It's quite a different matter to be a person who actively promotes an anti-church agenda. On a personal note, I was invited to the Albany Diocese a number of months ago to speak to the last vestiges of faithful Catholics there. They shared with me the tragic story of how the faith has been so gutted there under Bishop Howard Hubbard that they now all attend Eastern Rite Catholic churches because of how the Latin Rite churches, parishes, no longer preached of the authentic faith. It is a sad commentary on the times, but nonetheless totally accurate that Catholics must survey their parish and perform a virtual litmus test of orthodoxy before signing up. Even Cardinal Raymond Burke, a few weeks ago in Rome, said that Catholics could lose their faith by going to Mass because of the abuses at numerous parishes. Unbelievable, yes, 
but believe it. Another marker that demonstrates if a church leader is just misled or actually opposed to the church is their willingness to now change. It's clear to anybody with a brain that the horrors of the progressive modernists in the church have eviscerated the faith in the West. The list of woes is damnable. The extent of the damage is unmasking the enemies within the church. Anyone, pastor, bishop, DRE, music minister, teacher, principal, anyone, anyone who can not admit the carnage now simply does not want to see it. And given the current state of affairs, if they aren't willing to get on the long road back, then I'm sorry, but it would be imprudent not to consider them a danger to your faith. Getting on the long road back includes restoring reverence to the sacrifice of the Mass, preaching the hard truths about sexual immorality and the evil of birth control, doing everything they can do to restore a meaningful devotional life to their subjects. You get the picture. If these things are not being done, if they are being resisted, then it is more than a reasonable conclusion that those doing the resisting are enemies of the faith. No church leader can honestly claim today that he or she is unaware of the near collapse of the faith. If they aren't taking aggressive steps in preaching, prayer, liturgy, hirings and firings of diocesan or parish staff, then you have to let the facts speak for themselves. It's time to collect and gather the wheat into the barn. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber. Become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.